Welcome to the May 14th <laughs> meeting of your Murfreesboro City Council. Um, <clears throat> Council Member Madeline Skelos Harris has the prayer and the pledge tonight. Thank you, Mayor. May we bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, and with thanksgiving, Lord, for blessing us to see this another day that wasn't promised to us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you so much for the many things that we don't pause to do, and that's to say thank you, Lord. Sometimes when, in our prayers, Lord, we ask for so many things, but we fail to say thank you for the little things, like our families that are priceless, our friendships and our relationships, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for blessing us to be in the city. We are just driving just to council meeting tonight, Lord. I just saw so many blessings. I saw people planting flowers, playing with the children in the yard, walking the dogs. Lord, these are commodities that a lot of cities can't brag about, Lord. The peace that we have in this city, and we thank you for that. And we thank you today, Lord, that we were blessed to recognize some fallen officers, Lord, for the years of service that they gave, and they gave their lives during their passion. And Lord, as I went around the square, I passed the fallen reef that was presented today, and I just said, Lord, that could have been me, but through your grace and your mercy, you've allowed my golden moments to roll on a little while longer, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for our citizens, the senior citizens, the veterans, just our employees, just our entire city. And Lord, as we prepare to handle the business of the city, we ask that you move among us and that we make the decisions that are pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer that we ask in your darling son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a uh, proclamation I want to read and, and really want to read it uh, from here. Last week uh, was uh, Public Service recognition, recognition Week. And so, whereas in recognition of the millions of public employees at the federal, state, county, and city levels who, who serve Americans every single day, the unsung heroes of working public employees who take oaths to serve the public seriously, and whereas the many public service servants, including military personnel, police officers, firefighters, border control officers, embassy employees, health care professionals, and others risk their lives each day in service to the people of the United States and around the world. And whereas these servants of the public include teachers, doctors, scientists, train conductors, astronauts, nurses, safety inspectors, laborers, computers, technicians, social workers, and countless others who provide the services demanded of their governments by the American people day in and day out with efficiency and integrity. And whereas these public service servants at every level continually would be impossible, continuity it would be possible, impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Now, therefore, I, Shane McFarland, mayor of the city of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby proclaim this week as Public Service Recognition Week in Murfreesboro and urge all of our citizens to recognize the accomplishments of contributions of government employees at all levels, federal, state, county, and city. So I would like to ask, um, see several of our hardworking employees who are out in the uh, audience, and so I'd like to ask if you would please stand up if you're a... Uh, City of Murfreesboro or any other governmental employee. Thank you very much for what you guys do. Okay, um, we'll move into the consent agenda. You have several items in front of you. If you have any questions about uh, anything on the consent agenda. Mayor, hearing none, I move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright, you'll call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have the minutes of the May 7, 2015 special meeting in front of you. Any additions or deletions to the minutes? 
Hearing no changes, I move for acceptance. Second. I have a motion and a second, Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lowlands. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll now consider third readings and consider for passage on third and final reading ordinance 15 OZ 23 to rezone an area located west of Memorial Boulevard to Highway Commercial CH District. Move, Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright for call the roll. Ms. Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for passage on third and final reading ordinance 15 OZ 24 to rezone an area in Salem Creek subdivision south of New Salem Highway to single family residential 12 RS 12 district, single family residential 15 RS 15 district, and single family residential 10 RS 10 district. Move for passage. Second. Motion to second. That's right. Mid Ms. Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Consider for passage on third and final reading ordinance 15025 amending Murfreesboro City Code Appendix A zoning sections 24, 26, and 27 regarding separation of and landscaping between a building and drive up drive through lanes. Move for passage on third reading. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Kels Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right, we'll go into second readings. And we'll consider for passage on second reading ordinance 15026, amending the Murfreesboro City Code, Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages, Article 3, Beer and Article 4, Nudity on Premises. Move for passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright for call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. We'll consider for passage on second reading ordinance 15032, amending Chapter 33, Water and Sewer, Section 331 of the Murfreesboro City Code, dealing with minimum monthly water and sewer allowances and minimum monthly sewer charges. Move for passage on second reading. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. We'll now move into new business and we'll conduct a public hearing and consider for approval a certificate of compliance for Mari Patel at University Package Wine and Liquor Warehouse, 2834 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Uh, before we start our public hearings, we'll go over our public hearing rules and we ask that uh, each person speak for three min uh, no longer than three minutes. Uh, please come to the podium, state your name and address, make all comments addressed to towards the council, and you will only be able to speak once. Um, and then you also get five minutes if you're representing a group. And with that, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider for approval this certificate of compliance. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Kels Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Item 9 will consider for approval renewal certificate of compliance for Andy Patel at Meadows Liquors 4205 B Manson Pike. Mayor, this is for the state requirement to meet the two-year certificate of compliance for renewal of their liquor license. This is for an existing location, and their background check meets our requirements for you to approve this certificate of compliance. Yes, I move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Consider for adoption of resolution 15R11 to approve adoption and implementation of a classification and compensation plan. <coughs> Mr. Lyons? Uh, Mayor, members of uh, council, we did put a uh, revised uh, copy of the resolution on your desk uh, this evening. Looking at the uh, resolution that was included in your packet, we realized there was the potential uh, that there might be a three to four week gap 
where we wouldn't have a promotion policy. Uh, so section four has been amended to uh, add effective June 28th, 2015. And likewise on section five, uh, there's a clarification of the date uh, so that in repealing the existing uh, promotion policy, uh, we would not have a gap. And I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Are we going to vote on the amendment first or the? Well, the revised copy has been, been copy. placed on, on your desk, so that would be the one we would move for approval. Now, is that the motion to approve the plan? Pardon? Is that the motion to approve the plan? Yes. This is a motion to approve the plan. The, res the, the resolution does adopt and implement the classification and compensation plan. Okay. okay. Well, let me withdraw my motion no, no, first no. and, and right. open it up for questions and comments. All right, I'll, I'll kick it off if you can understand me. I've had a pollen tsunami land up my nose, and it's not pleasant. Um, this plan has been discussed and turned upside down and inside out, and uh, it's, it's significantly better than the old plan. The uh, employees have had some opportunities to participate in with the JQs and the reclassifications. But there's been some shortfalls in that, that we haven't had our classification comments back and studied, and I think that's a learning lesson for staff that, that that's important. So when we do this again, I want us to remember that. Uh, one of the things that I want to see you do, Mr. Lyons, is how are you going to stay in touch with the council and what are your plans to continually engage the council and the um, employees and through the department heads? Sure. Uh, because there's still a lot of unanswered questions, maybe not in your mind, but in some other people's minds. Mm -hmm. So uh, I view this thing as, not a, as a, not a finished document, but a living document, and I don't want it put on the shelf. I want it to be taken down and looked at. I want to have the opportunity to say, where are we in this? Yeah. Another suggestion I would make, Mr. Lyons, is I would like to see us meet annually, maybe three months before the budget comes out, maybe in March or April, and discuss the big picture items in this compensation study. Uh, we've got... Uh, You've got cost of living that you've got to consider. You've got raises. You've got, uh, I'm not going to say step because we don't have step for, but within our ranges, we need to know where we are and how much money that we can award the employees uh, for exceptional service. And the finances of the city change. Um, we're having a fairly good year this year. Uh, and we hope it continues. But we also need to keep in mind that one of the major goals of the council is to have sustainable financial security where we're not spending ourselves out of business or we're not overloading this year and overloading from last year, that we have a, a long-range look at the budget. Uh, another thing that I feel very comfortable about in this is that there's 193 public safety employees that were out of range badly. And they're being brought up to range to make their salaries compatible with the other communities. And they were not in the past. And we need to not ever let that happen again. And I, I understand it's a little bit this year and a little bit that year, and then you throw in a recession, all things mount up. But one, we don't need to let that happen again. And two, this is going to give relief to these young police officers and young firefighters who are in a non-competitive situation in the past. And, and their raises are bringing them up to be competitive. So with that, that's basically what I wanted to say, is I want to make sure that we look at the big picture, that we keep uh, council informed, and that we 
continue to listen to our employees. I know sometimes that we think that uh, every situation is unique, and it's not. Uh, we've got 1,150 employees who are all unique pe people. <coughs> But we need to make sure that their salaries are in range and competitive and that they are motivated by many things, and one of them is salary. Very good. So that's about all the talking I can do right now. <laughs> I'll turn it over to my colleagues. Doug, you had mentioned something last meeting, and uh, I'll sort of dovetail on that. Maybe this is something, uh, one of the questions that I asked, which was, maybe along the same lines, was to ask kind of like a, a formalized way to address all the administrative review uh, forms that are that are still outstanding. And, sure. you know, I, I, Doug had mentioned something previously and, and on Monday about, you know, perhaps setting up some sort of a committee to, to kind of be involved with overseeing that. I, I think one of the, I mean, I think one, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but one of the valid points that I thought that would be, would create would be if we had a couple of people involved in that, whether it's council or other staff or whatever, that weren't kind of the the already existing chain of command from us, you know, just as far as the people who are already making those decisions, uh, that perhaps you know we we would just maybe get a different set of eyes and and be able to look at those things and make sure they were addressed. I, kind of along the same lines, what he's saying, we don't want this thing to just go up on the shelf and then. Six months later, we're asking, whatever happened to those administrative review forms, you know? Did, did you put something together for that? Or? As a matter of fact, um, Mr. LaLance, if you look at Section 11, when we first began drafting um, the resolution, uh, I heard the council say they wanted to hear back uh, from the city manager about the status of the administrative reviews, and I added that sentence to the resolution uh, that would you know, cause me to make sure I give you a formal report once the administrative review process is done. And you know, as Mr. Young uh, mentioned, you know, engaging our employees it, is vital, it's critical, it's important. It's one of the goals of the city council is to engage the community, and that includes uh, our employees. And I think you know, we've tried to demonstrate through this process, we have absolutely gotten our employees involved in developing uh, this uh, classification and, and compensation plan. And uh, the idea that we would continue to engage our workforce you know, by the city manager's office, by the human resources department, and by the leadership team uh, is going to be important. Uh, we learn from it every time. Uh, so the idea that we can continue to uh, have conversations with uh, our employees, uh, learn from them, uh, share information with them so they stay uh, up to date uh, is something uh, we, we absolutely need to do. But uh, when the administrative review process is done, uh, I'll be uh, absolutely providing you a written report uh, on you know, what that looked like. Mr. Lyons, in part of that, could uh, I, I'm a fan of the round tables. I think if they're done right, you're going to get some good ideas where you might not get them uh, in a, a different setting. So I would like to maybe for you to consider stepping those up mm -hmm. and, uh, and getting feedback from our employees because the best ideas come from the people that are doing it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're doing it every day. Yeah, I've enjoyed those. And I'd like to see a council member be on that committee that actually uh, reviews some of these uh, administrative reviews and make the, re and the recommendations because it's sort of like years ago when uh, <coughs> an employee was terminated or whatever, there was a complaint that you went back to the people that actually terminated you for the uh, appeal, and that's when the disciplinary committee was formed by the city of Murfreesboro, where it included, other than the people making the decision, it brought other people in. And uh, so, sort of on the same uh, thought, thought here, I, I would like to see uh, the mayor appoint a council member to also be looking at these administrative review forms. <laughs> Because, um, not that we are micromanaging, but I think something that, that we put so much time and uh, taxpayers have footed the bill on this, that I think that um, if you want to call it micromanagement, I don't like to call it that. Uh, 
macro manage, but I think the council needs to be directly involved in this process um, because some of the administrative reviews were turned down and, you know, it'd be nice to know why they were turned down. It's just like, um, I just would like to see a council member in this process. Rob, did, did all of the 199 or so that were turned in, did they all go to MAG or did? No, sir. Okay. We have about 149 did. And the other 50 were queried out by you or Glenn or both or? Uh, not by me. I, I haven't reviewed those yet. Either the, by the, the department 50. head or HR, yes, sir. Okay. And that's, I guess that was a good question, Rick, because that 50 been a good thing to see why the, those 50 were not included going back to MAG. And not saying we don't trust the people that's making the decision, but something this important, I'd like to see the council involved. Yeah, it's not always a matter of trust. I mean, it's a, it might just be a matter of a difference of, of opinion of why you would, why you would said I asked, yeah. scratch it or why you wouldn't scratch it, you right. know? I mean, I, I think that's, it's not necessarily has to be trust. I think somehow moving forward, you know, we've talked about performance management and I'm not sure how that moving forward will look um, in some areas. You know, I, I, I don't know how you, on public safety, how you, what the measures of performance would be. But I do think that one thing that has come out during this pay study is how we find ways to reward, um, you know, I, I don't want to use these examples, but if someone goes above and beyond and they improve themselves to go get a degree or they improve themselves to go learn a new classification or a new trade, you know, I would argue that that helps the employee or the citizens of Murfreesboro. The more our employees are trained, the better that they can provide service. So we've got to come up with some kind of incentive program that we have a pool that's set aside that we're, you know, much like many corporations, if you go get, you have a, business, a bachelor's administration and you go get an MBA, there's incentive when you go get that MBA. And if we can find a way that we reward our, our employees for, you know, those efforts that they put, um, I think it'll be good to show people that you know we have faith in them, which I know we do, but we also have faith with with how we're going to reward them when they when they do things like that. So I really would like to see somehow in the next many months that um, we come up with some kind of compensation and incentive program. Well, the, the issue of you know performance uh, management, including you know pay for performance uh, is the direction where I believe the organization you know, needs to get to. That will take every bit of two years to plan, train, communicate, uh, practice, uh, but we need to reward our hard chargers and to the employees whose performance is perhaps not where it could be, uh, find ways to coach them up, give them opportunities to improve, and uh, if they do, uh, we're all the better for it, and if they don't, then there needs to be a consequence for it. That's a small number of folks. but. You know, we eventually need to drive in that direction. I agree with you wholeheartedly. One of the things you had just mentioned, uh, Mr. Lyons, is two years. Uh, how long does it take to train an EMT? Five months, six months, seven months? Somewhere in that range. I'd hate to wait two years. And, and when I say two years, Mr. Young, it is the whole process that's going to include the training and, and coaching our supervisors about how to do it correctly. Um, we may want to, you know, cascade implementation of a system like that down where we start with the leadership team and then the next tier of supervision and then down into the organization. We may want to go one year where it's not tied to pay to make sure we're doing it the best way we can before there is a, a consequence on, on pay. I'd be happy to you know, work with Mr. Godwin and bring you back some ideas about how we could head in I, that direction. I think the mayor has hit this right on the button. Uh, is it? Do you want to put, try to put something in this resolution to that, Mr. Mayor, or do you want to just let the 
Well, because I, I know I had a conversation with Mr. Godwin, and he is working on that. Now, his plate's pretty full in the last three months, but he should be working on some sort of plan to figure out how to compensate for continuing education yeah. for our employees. And, and there's really two two different issues there. One is you know how we look right. at you know employee development in, in terms of, of education. Uh, that's one path. Um, and then the second, Mr. Godwin's already uh, begun doing some research on that. Uh, secondly, the, the pay for performance piece is going to take some time. That's going to require a consultant. And I think uh, if we take and we say the pay performance, that's going to be a long-term goal. But a short-term goal, we could easily, and, and I'm not speaking for the council members, but if we feel confident in our employees enough that we, during this budget year, it may be something we set as a goal for the next budget year that we say, okay, we're going to put a pool of of funds aside and then if we have these criteria and if people go and hit these criteria then they can be rewarded for that uh, and you know I, those are the things I think if there's a way we can incentivize but Mr. Schmuggler. Mr. Shane I, th I think you're on target as far as the incentive and I think there should be a pool set aside in our next budget but uh, the incentive and the uh, I would like for it to be a bonus so that we don't augment the system that we've, we're implementing now so that we still can go back and not have that hidden history because basically if we start giving out uh, merit raises like that then you're going to skew what we're trying to accomplish here by saying here is what where you should be at on your scale so and if, if you were to do it as a bonus you would also be rewarding them the year that they were either a high performer or that they uh, went beyond on their education requirements sure. and so so I think a bonus would be a much better incentive for us to do out of that pool than to actually do a, a, what, a traditional merit raise that would go into your salary yes. uh, because I, I think that kind of messes up our why is so and so getting paid so and so when they were promoted on the same day and that and, and they've got the same days of service that's what we're trying to work out of our system we're trying to work in so that we do have parity and clarity as to why you're getting paid what you're getting paid well we we would love the opportunity to come back and have uh, you know a conversation with the council and present some ideas about you know what we can do it's a complicated area and, and it needs to be done well done poorly it's a problem uh, but we really want to work hard to get this right. Now, Mr. Godwin and I have talked about this for several years, uh, so we'd be more than happy to come back to you with some ideas uh, next year. Mr. Lamp? I was just going to ask, we're, uh, you know, we've talked a couple times in these meetings, too, about doing some sort of an overlap study and plugging that into this equation and, uh, you know, down the road. I, mean, I think that we've clearly identified that as a, um, as an issue that we need to address uh, and, and I think you know a lot of people felt like you know that might have been an issue that would have been addressed in this plan and, and you know I if it's going to be addressed I'm comfortable with this plan not addressing it <laughs> if it's not going to be addressed in the future I'm not comfortable with this plan not addressing it I guess is the best way the easiest and most simple way for me to say it so um, I guess that'd be another one of those things. I just need some assurance on that. You know, I feel like, you know, those sort of those loose ends that we've got out there to me are the administrative reviews, which I'm glad that we'll be addressing that for certain. Um, and then, then the overlap study, which, I, you know, uh, if we could make that happen in a, in a different um, in a different manner than this has transpired, that would tickle me to death. But uh Love to see how that can be built and what our options are there and how we might address some of these things without, without messing up the system that we that we're building. You know, and, and you know, regarding the the you know, overlapping pay ranges, and you know, as I've shared with you, that one's got a lot of complexity to it, and whether or not we can completely eliminate it or we could reduce it, uh, there's significant legal issues, personnel issues. Uh, that I want to get with our team to figure out, you know, what's going to make the best sense. I don't want to stand here and say I can come up with a plan that and can eliminate yeah. it or, or, or get rid of it without understanding, have, helping you understand all the, the ramifications of that. But I know it's on, you know, the radar of more than one department. And, you know, I want to try to have, you know, some more in-depth conversations to see, you know, what's the best course of action. Is it, you know, stay right where we're at or do we need to look at, uh, some uh, minor adjustments or look at some major adjustments and you know 
it's an issue. So I want to make sure that we can explore it and unpack it and take a look at it and try to make a you know, decision that's going to be best uh, for the organization. So uh, it, it is on the radar. Absolutely, Mr. My, Lawrence. My, uh, my take on it, I, you know, once we get to that point for you guys, to love to hear what you guys' input on it is on that. But um, I don't think we're going to get rid of it. You know, I mean, I think it's basically mathematically impossible to just get rid of it. I, I agree with that, you know. Um, so so I, I don't want to take the angle of we looked at it, we can't get rid of it, so we, you know, so we scratched it, you know, to see what some options may be. I think any, um, my sense is any effort to improve it would be significantly appreciated um, by the departments that have that, you know, have kind of the, the most sensitivity to it and, and most the most overlap. So, um, you know, Perhaps when you go to build that, uh, might be a good roundtable discussion. Or, um, but thanks, Bill. Sorry. Well, no, it's fine. I just was thinking that uh, you know this this process has been healthy. Uh, I remember going through this uh, the last time I was serving, and I thought we had taken some dramatic steps forward in how we were looking at compensating our employees. Uh, back then with Burris, mm -hmm. <coughs> but uh, this whole process, and quite honestly, I, I hope everyone realizes that the council is uh, trying to be very diligent in understanding this. I've learned linear progression, I've learned <laughs> compression, I've learned phrases that I didn't have a whole lot of experience in, and um, have really agonized over this particular study to make sure that it, I felt it was fair. Uh, but what, for, where I finally got some peace, and I think it might be helpful to tell you where, how I got to where I am. And it's with an analogy that what we have basically presenting is, a, is the framing of a house, a, a protocol, a a system, a way of looking at compensating uh, that provides for two points of view and perspectives. One is fair compensation for employees, but also responsible administration of funds that the taxpayers charge us to allocate. And I think what this compensation, what this study does is just create the frame of a house. And there's a lot of questions that are yet to be defined when we start framing it. And we may want a bigger living room, another bathroom. We may have to change substantially what we're doing. And I think that's what I would, had questioned to make sure we had a procedure for moving forward with this because implementation is where the success or the failure of this whole study is going to be judged. If we are flexible enough to correct issues that continue to exist moving forward, and if we are involved in that process. And that's why I think one of the concerns of the council is to make sure that we do this in an extremely timely fashion so that while, you know, while we are striking, while we have knowledge of what needs to be addressed, and I, and I would just commend to staff that we we start to build the frame something on the frame quickly so that it can provide for uh, an assurance of individuals that we are addressing some of those concerns that if we choose to adopt this tonight that it is is a living document and we've proven that it's a living document by a the way we're going to move forward in the next short term not just in the next three years when we decide to do another market study uh, so that would be, that would be my, uh, I guess, charge uh, to us as councilmen to not and and to staff is to uh, continue to be involved in this process and not just set this uh, as having completed a, a a marathon run and we've gotten to the finish line. This is something that only becomes practical when we use it and work it and build on it and begin to work out those things. If we're moving towards what I think is fair, uh, a reward for, for performance, then we need to move forward 
with that as quickly as possible, as, as reasonable as possible, so that uh, the employees realize that this isn't just the finish line. This is just the framework for what we're going to do forward. Uh, one phrase that is not in the <coughs> proposal that I just want to clarify, does this adoption include the open range concept? Yes, sir. That phrase was not there, but I'm assuming that that was what you in intended. That includes open range in the public safety plan? That's, that's what I was wondering, okay. So if we adopt this, are we going to agree to um, have one of our council members actively involved in these reviews, looking at the reviews? I was going to ask if you wouldn't mind. I um, I think we need to come up with this. This is what I'm hear, hearing, Ms. Scales. I, I, I've put employee engagement, number one, is to continue to stay involved with our employees. Number two, council involvement in the ARF forms. And so I, I think you know, in the resolution, you're coming back to us with a uh, I was going to come back with, with a report. The, you know, the, if we go back to the, the beginning of the classification compensation uh, study, and when the report was delivered, we gave you a, a, a administrative review process. We said most communities don't open it up to all employees, but we want to have it. And you laid out step by step how that administrative review process was to go. Uh, some of the administrative reviews that have come in, and we realized there was a, an error, it was already corrected. There were several then that you know, went to HR. Um, HR looked at them. In some cases, the employees questioned how they were calculated in the plan. They put pencil to paper and said, MAG calculated it exactly correct. So that would be an example of an administrative review that didn't move forward. The employee thought the calculation was wrong. We double checked it. The answer was correct, and so the administrative review stopped right there. Now, there were about 150 of them, I think it was 149 total, that now are in MAG's uh, court. Some of them were asking about market, placement in the step, which range they should be in, and MAG's going to go back and look at the job analysis questionnaire to see if they had things placed correctly. So MAG will make a decision on those, and the ones that they say no then come to the city manager and the policy you adopted said the city manager's decision was final. I guess the, what I'm hearing is that the 50 that did not make it mm -hmm. yeah. to MAG, mm -hmm. did you get a chance to review those 50? Like you're going to be able to review the other ones that MAG? Uh, I did not. Okay, I think that's something that I'm, I'm hearing that yep. can you? Mr. Godman, okay. my help. Mr. Mayor, just to clarify. That those 50 were sent back to each department head as you requested me to do and of those 50 that were sent back one was re-requested to be sent to MAG which was I think the plan really outlines what the criteria is to, to get your uh, MAG or not MAG but your JAG uh, request through the process. If um, the, the, the only fear, and, and I've got complete respect for your suggestion, Madeline, but the, the problem is, is I, I would certainly not want to be the council member who's involved in determining whether or not employees get raises. And, and basically that's what you're going to be doing if we put somebody in that position. You're either going to become the most hated council member or you're going to be the most popular council member that there's ever been in Murfreesboro by being on that committee, I think, because you're going to be the go-to council member that everybody's going to say, I've got to go talk to that council member because they're going to determine what my pay or whether or not my job uh, I don't think that question gets approved. I, no, what I'm saying is if something is not accepted, then it's an appeal is this administrative form. That's your appeal. Right. But it's going back to the same people who made the decision. And I don't see many of them changing their minds. That's what I'm saying. Well, Ms. Gales Harris, if, if I get an you know, administrative review form and I review it and I believe it should be changed, I'm going to change it. But there's been many, many decisions been made through the course of this study that We've had to make a decision, and, and we need to be consistent with all those others. And if it's not warranted, you know, we will explain that. 
Um, but, you know, I, we've got to make a decision ultimately based on the facts before us and being consistent with the focus and framework document uh, and the rest of the study. Uh, but if I see a mistake, I'm going to fix it. But was there a, I mean, maybe part of this is just that we don't, you know, I, I'm not 100% familiar with exactly how that administrative review form looked. And, you know, I mean, was it a, I mean, clearly uh, we, we uh, uh, asked you uh, on your, or gave you the authority on your asking to, to follow that administrative review process, which I think is great. I mean, to give people the, uh, the opportunity to do that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, was it, you said, did everybody understand that basically the, the thing that they're the, what they really have to prove on that is <clears throat> they have to prove that something that they had on their JAQ, they had to add to that. I mean, was it, I mean, essentially it was going to have to be changing something that was on their JAQ or adding to it. Uh, you know, we had a comment about some, a group having all the same JAQs, which <clears throat> I, I worry might have, might have hurt, not helped. Um, is that, is that the, the big, it's a great question. Uh, the biggest majority of the employees and obviously the ones that were sent to MAG felt that their placement was incorrect in the range or their title was wrong. And those, those were easily sent to, to MAG. So I do think the majority of our employees very clearly understood the purpose of the form. Uh, I, I would point out that the, the biggest number of those that did not um, go forward to MAG that were again sent back to each department head had to do with previous policies and departmental seniority, which we've spoken to council about before, and, and certainly those policies weren't going to be changed or amended retroactively to previous council decisions. But the great yeah. question, I think the biggest number of, of employees understood placement or job title uh, they took issue with. Did, did essentially, did it basic, did most of those, I guess, you know, this might be one of those things you could look at if we, if we looked at all of them, and I don't know, you know, I don't necessarily want to be that one either, but. But what I'm saying is, uh, if they just sent it back and said, hey, I don't think I was in the right classification, but MAG still has their old JAQ, <laughs> there is zero chance, unless they just made a mistake, unless MAG just made an error in, in where they put them, there is zero chance that's getting changed exactly. because there's no new information. So did were they asked for new information, you know, what sure. what basis are you what basis are you using to say you put me in the wrong category i guess and i, let me, let me I hope that to, makes sense yeah, let, me, let me try to answer mr godwin may uh, be able to supplement uh, what i say you know when an employee filled out the jaq they understood their job what they did they filled it out and it was checked by their supervisor but what i saw happen in in these situations was they were saying well i should be up one grade higher or two grades higher. But the fact of the matter is they weren't looking at the JQs for all the other positions mm -hmm. in the grade higher than them or two grades higher than them. They had no knowledge of it. They just felt like they should be there. So you know, MAG's going to take a look at that to make sure that there wasn't a mistake. But the employee had the perspective of a single JAQ while MAG had all of the JAQs. Yes, they had the opportunity of the employees. They had the opportunity in the administrative review process to include new information that might be helpful to MAG or, or no? Absolutely. Y yes, they did. Some okay. included a lot of new information. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. I mean, they did. I, I... Well, let me ask this then, Mr. Lyons, when you give us your report, I think you're going to periodically give us a report uh, on the progress and everything. Well, well, my intent is that as soon as I get the uh, administrative review forms from MAG, I'm going to work on, go to work on those immediately. And try to get those uh, turned around, you know, make a decision on those as quickly as I can. This will be a priority for me. I'm not going to let it string out over the summer. My goal is to have it done in, uh, you know, a very short period of time. And when I'm done with that, uh, I'll send a written report to the council about, you know, what I received, what I said, what I agreed to change, and uh, where I upheld the decision that was made by the department head, HR, MAG, and myself. And, and I trust that, you know, you've done a good job so far, and I mm -hmm. trust that. But in your report, then, the ones that were turned down, can you just give us just a brief paragraph? It could be lumped into one. Uh, yeah, I'll try to be descriptive. Why the ones that were turned down kind of let us know 
yeah. what was wrong with I, I'll, I'll try to be descriptive. And, and again, I want to re, uh, reiterate what I said when Mr. Lowrance asked me uh, the, the first question about this. When the first draft of the resolution got put on my desk, I knew you all had an interest in the administrative reviews and the outcome of them, and I added the sentence to the resolution saying the city manager shall report to the city council uh, you know, a status report on the administrative review. I, I, I clearly understand the importance, and I was the author of that sentence. So. Uh, I'm holding myself accountable to make sure I get a report to you. And the reason why I'm here, again, I'm saying that because the whole gist of what I'm hearing from employees is that um, they're saying one thing and management is saying another thing, and you don't want to say this one is not telling the truth and this one is not telling the truth. So in the report that we get, not only get uh, the response back of the ones that were changed, but I'd like to see some of the comments of the ones that were actually turned down. Okay. No, in uh, in your report, we want to know why they were turned down. And that it will eliminate the council sitting on a committee. We will be getting it in the report. Because here again, this one, this group is saying this, and, and you all are saying, no, that's not right. And so we kind of like the uh, white and the Oreo cookie here. But we have to make the decision. Well, on a very brief synopsis, what the employee is saying is there was a mistake made. Mm -hmm. What the review is going to say is either there, there was a mistake made or no, there wasn't. Mm -hmm. And, and that what the employee is being given the opportunity that feels that they were mistakenly either put in the wrong range or uh, what they're saying is they've got the burden of proof to prove that this is why I should be in the other range. Rob's got a good point in the fact that they really didn't know what the other range requirements consisted of prior to mm -hmm. probably submitting that even. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I think that, you know, no, for, what for I'm us saying to get a review back and say this is how many were approved and how many weren't approved, I think that's appropriate for us to go into a individual basis and look and say this is each one of them and, and why it was approved or why it wasn't. I mean, other than just mm -hmm. saying there was no mistake made, I'm not sure that we really need a detailed explanation. What I'm saying is what we are being told, I'm being told that that is not correct what we are being told. That's what I'm saying. So I'm leaving that like that. And while we're speaking of MAG, um, I'm sure we all received the email from a, one of our employees uh, feeling like MAG disrespected our employees. Um, About our employees, you know, we would not allow our children to go up to a police officer and call a police officer a pig. We would not allow that. And as counsel, that's not showing respect. And I think we all should be respected and we all should respect one another. And um, not only that, were well, the police officers addressed as pigs, the other employees were addressed uh, another way. So I, I would like to see, because we don't disrespect our employees, I would like to at least see an apology coming from MAG on those comments. Madeline, I was looking Carolyn Long straight in the face when she made that statement. And, I, and when she made the statement, her analogy was on Orwell's novel, based on Animal Farm, that pigs had made the comment that some pigs are more equal than others. But, but, and, and that's the comment that the pigs made in the novel. She had no idea. She didn't smile. She didn't smirk. She didn't have any idea that she was comparing that to the policeman's ranges that she was referring to. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say she doesn't need to make it clear, but, but you know. Uh, but when she addressed the other group, when the other, she addressed the other group, she didn't call them pigs, but those other would they just fall where they fall? I, I just think it was disrespectful. That's just me personally. I think that was disrespectful. We pointed, you know, we shared the uh, email with Miss Long. She was, you know, she uh, that she believes that term is offensive uh, toward law enforcement. Absolutely offensive. She meant nothing by it. She was not trying to uh, say anything about a po police officer. She mentioned that she was using the George Orwell. Orwell a book reference in meant no disrespect whatsoever uh, toward uh, the police officers. I'm taking the pig out. She also addressed the other group as 
those other, and I can't think of the name now, just fall where they fall. Uh, I forgot what name. They, I, I don't know what it was, but and they just fall where they fall. She addressed them as a name, and I just slobs, man. slobs or whatever. I, I, I just, I just thought it was disrespectful, and you know, <clears throat> that's just me. And I just felt like she owed an apology. I'll be glad to pass that along to her, Mayor. I'm, I mean, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lyons. I'm gonna pound you one more time. There's nothing in here about education, but I want to see something back in a reasonable length of time mm -hmm. on rewarding our employees for their advancement in, in skills uh, and education. Yes, sir. So I think what we're hearing, employee engagement, mm -hmm. um, you've got it in the, the resolution about the administrative review forms, education and incentive-based pay on rewarding employees for furthering themselves and the community when they do that. And then I think Mr. Lance talked about um, <coughs> no overlap and yep. that would tie into a command study on the public safety side, which you've talked about with our box and pay ranges inside the box, but yes, sir. really looking at that in more detail to see how that, that works. <coughs> Did I miss anything? One thing I would add to is this last the, the one thing that I've kind of noticed through this process that that um, I would encourage you guys to, to think through a way that, you, that um, would educate our employees about this plan. You know, we literally got the final draft an hour ago. And, you know, each time a new one's come out, there's been new questions. And I don't know that's going to be the way these things happen. They're very complex and tons of information. But please do everything you can. I've had multiple conversations, and one of the things I'll tell you is once you, once you do know a lot about the plan, you, you, there's a lot of times that the employee's kind of gone, oh, that's all right. That's, that's better than I kind of thought. I, wouldn't, I didn't really realize that. You know, I mean, there, there, is, there has been a lot of that. Now, I'm not saying it's just right and perfect and set, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But there certainly is some, there are some good things to this plan and some, some things that are going to fix a lot of the problems we've had in the past going forward. I mean, I, I acknowledge that and, um, you know, I've kind of been a stickler for some details on this, but there clearly is some of that in here. And, um, but, but getting that information, you know, it, it, it certainly is better if that information has come through the proper channels and gotten to those employees ASAP. Um, so. I guess please uh, have a have a plan for that. Get that information out quickly. I asked for an example of of sort of a progression. Um, I, I can't go through this here. I think Shane might have mentioned something about a PowerPoint, but it probably was a little too late to get a PowerPoint uh, together when we got this. But you know, one of the things that I noticed, and, and again, just sort of taking some examples and taking some very uh, variable raises, which we all know we don't. You know, those aren't guaranteed, but. You know that the progression through uh, an entry level, taking one promotion, taking another promotion, um, it is clearly a much better path than than what we've had previously. Um, and because of the promotion policy that we're adding to this, that's part of this resolution too. Um, you know, I, I was pretty pleased with the ones I've seen. I didn't look at every department and every job and all that kind of stuff, but the three or four we've looked at are definitely better. Uh, and definitely um, are not a, what I mentioned the other night, not going to be a, it's going to take you 16 years to get, you know, from here, or if you go five years and you get a promotion, is it going to take you 16 more years to get the top out? No, it is absolutely not. I mean, I, I've run enough of them to know that. So that's a pretty cool thing. And, and our employees need to understand that, you know. So I think that part where the education comes in would be really helpful. Rick, you, you really nailed it. Uh, that's some very good comments. Information on how I can be promoted is, a, yeah. it, it is very important to me and, and very important to um, all our employees. So I, I think that any time we have an opportunity to show them the way, the way this goes, uh, that would be good, good, useful information. And I've had some people also uh, 
Rick tell me that, oh, it's not doing that. It, it's their, their idea of what it was wasn't really what it was. And, you know, everybody thinks negatively. So there's, there are some good points in here. But if you can figure out a way to let the employees know what their range to promotion and uh, pay scale increases, I think that will go a long way. And I'm not sure how you do that. Probably in small meetings of department heads, but that's important, and I'm going to be quiet. I've had enough. Doug, it's interesting. In the last month or so, I doubt if any of us have hardly passed any city employees where we haven't had a conversation about the pay study. And uh, even on the, the lawn out here front this morning, we were talking to uh, some recreation, Madeline and I were talking to some recreation employees about their pay study. The night before last, I guess it was, or at, two or three nights ago, I was talking to a police officer in Arby's, and uh, he was a young police officer who just got on, and I asked him what he thought about the pay study, and he, he didn't know me from Adam, which was good. And, and he said, I don't think it'll ever be approved. And I said, why do you think that? And he said, because for me, he said, it's going to be a significant enough pay raise that it will pay my car payment, and for me, that's like giving me a car. And, and I said, well, trust me, I think we're going to get there sooner or later. I said, uh, if you'll just give us a little more time, I think we'll get it approved. So having said that, I'm going to resubmit my motion uh, to approve the package as presented tonight. I have a motion. Based on what Shane is asking for, the additional, right? Based on what Shane, as far as. He's, he's not amending it, uh, the motion, is he? No, I'm not. Uh, not amending the resolution, but I think it's very what we're saying. That we're going to ask that, for those that things. these are things right. that the council has clearly said right. we want to see. So, yeah. so my my motion is to approve the resolution as presented tonight. I'll second. All right, we have a motion. To second, Ms. Wright, for call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you to all the employees for their their work. Um, I hope it's a while before we have to go through another compensation plan. But I do think that we're headed in the right direction. And Mr. Lyons, um, we've reviewed the compensation, and so we'll continue to work and, and make sure that we we find a better better way to continue to the plan. Absolutely. All right, pursuant to resolution 15OZR29 adopted by the City Council on April 16, 2015, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning approximately 4.47 acres located along the east side of Agri Park Drive from Highway Commercial CH District to Residential Multifamily 16 RM16 District. 2015-406 Beach and Fair Properties Ap Applicant Notice of said public hearing was published in the April 27, 2015 issue of a local newspaper. Mr. Blomley. Good evening, Mayor McFarland and members of council. Our first public hearing tonight, as you mentioned, is a rezoning request along the uh, east side of Agri Park Drive, just to the south of John Rice Boulevard. This tract actually has fronted John, both John Rice Boulevard and Agri Park Drive. It's currently zoned commercial highway and uh, Beach and Fair Properties, the owner, is requesting the rezoning of the uh, western 4.47 acres of the tract to RM16. Uh, first, a little bit uh, about the adjacent zoning and land uses to orient you. Uh, to the north of the subject property is the Rutherford County Pause facility, Pet Adoption and Welfare Services. Uh, the Lane Agri Park is a little bit further to the north along John Rice Boulevard. Uh, Directly across the street is property that was rezoned from CH to RM16, the same request that we have before us tonight for the uh, development of an apartment complex called Vintage Blackman, which has had a site plan approved um, last year as well. The property to the south is, uh, there are two parcels to the south uh, that are currently developed. One is along John Rice Boulevard, a small multi-tenant commercial building, zone CH, and also the Harper's Point apartment complex, which is also zoned RM16. So the applicant, considering the uh, fact that there is existing RM16 zoning in the, in the immediate vicinity, uh, including an existing apartment complex and a proposed apartment complex across the street, 
feels that the western portion of this property is suited to multifamily residential development and uh, he is uh, not seeking to rezone the whole parcel just the westernmost portion the front portion would remain uh, zone ch if the request is approved now we do have a uh, just a sample concept plan that i put on the um, on the tv in front of you you can see it would be a um, because of the small acreage it would only be a small apartment complex with the acreage of 4.47 acres a uh, maximum of 72 dwelling units would be permitted by right of course additional units may be permitted with density bonuses uh, and you can see the front portion of the property along john rice remaining commercial highway with the potential for a uh, the development of a commercial building uh, with that being said the planning commission <laughs> did uh, recommend approval unanimously of this rezoning request uh, Mr. Matt Taylor with SCC is here. If you have any questions for him, he's representing uh, the applicant, as is the applicant, Mr. Clay Beach. I'll be happy to answer any questions as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plumley. We'll now open the public hearing for this um, Rezoning request. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider for passage on first reading ordinance 15 OZ 29 to rezone an area along Agri Park Drive to residential multifamily 16 RM 16 district. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Mr. Wright, you'll call the roll. I'm sorry. We get. So. Okay. Mr. Wright, you'll call the roll. Ms. Gals Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Abstain. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We had one abstention. Okay, uh, pursuant to resolution 15 OZR 30 adopted by the City Council on April 16, 2015, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning approximately 2.86 acres from residential multifamily 16 district to commercial fringe district and approximately 12.59 acres from residential multifamily RM 16 district to single family residential RS 8 district along the south of Veterans Parkway. Cornerstone Development LLC applicant notice of said public hearing was published in the April 27, 2015 issue of a local newspaper. Mr. Plumley. located along the south side of Veterans Parkway. It is just to the east of the intersection of Veterans Parkway and St. Andrews Drive. Um, there's a little bit of history with this parcel. I'll, I'll do my best to be brief. Property was annexed into the city in 2005 and zoned PRD simultaneous with its annexation as uh, a PRD named Kimbro Place. It's going to be a single family uh, subdivision. Then subsequently, after Kimbrough Place never developed, it was rezoned as a PUD in 2008 called Indigo. Uh, Indigo was a mixed-use PUD that uh, uh, had both uh, commercial along the frontage of Veterans Parkway, uh, multifamily residential, and single-family residential. Uh, Indigo, in that form, never came to fruition. And then uh, the two parcels that comprise the Indigo PUD were rezoned. Uh, the larger westernmost parcel uh, that you see on the map in front of you was rezoned to RS8, and the eastern smaller parcel, which is 25 acres, was rezoned to RM16. Uh, Mr. Uh, Harry Mingi with Cornerstone Development is currently developing the Indigo subdivision, which shares the name with the former PUD, but it's an entirely single family residential subdivision that is being uh, currently developed on the RS8 portion of uh, the property that you see in front of you. Uh, he has a contract on the RM16 portion, uh, but does not wish to develop the entire uh, property as multifamily residential. Uh, he sees the southern half of the property as suitable for uh, additional RS8 development. So he is requesting the 12.59 uh, acres on the south side of the property to be rezoned to RS8, which is the same zoning classification of his neighboring subdivision to the west. And then 2.86 acres along the frontage to be rezoned to commercial fringe. He sees this area as a uh, uh, potential location for neighborhood commercial development 
that could serve the increasing number of rooftops in the area. Uh, in addition, Mr. Mingi is a developer of uh, daycare facilities, and so that is one of the proposed uses he may develop on the subject property. Uh, so with that being said, with the RM16 zoning for 25 acres, there's the potential for uh, a total of 400 dwelling units. Uh, the revised numbers, if the zoning goes through, would be closer to 200 units with both the multifamily and the single family combined, uh, in addition to the approximately three acres of commercial at the frontage. Uh, so the commercial uh, is being added to the front if this is approved, but the total number of units would be uh, cut in about half. Uh, the surrounding land uses, uh, uh, as you know, this is in, on the uh, periphery of the city, so there are a number of uh, large uh, residential and agricultural tracts in the county, uh, but there's also, there are also several single-family residential subdivisions, such as the Three Rivers subdivision, a little bit to the east, and the developing Sheffield Park subdivision uh, to the west of the subject property. I'll be happy to answer any questions. The Planning Commission did unanimously recommend approval of this rezoning request. Uh, Mr. Mingi is in the audience, as is his uh, representative, Mr. Clyde Roundtree from Huddleston Steel Engineering. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll open the public hearing to consider this re rezoning request, or excuse me, rezoning request. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider for passage on first reading ordinance 15 OZ30 to rezone an area along Veterans Parkway to Commercial Fringe District and Single Family Residential 8 RS8 District. Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Wright for call the roll. <coughs> Ms. Gels Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Pursuant to resolution 15OZR31 adopted by the City Council on April 16, 2015, conduct a public hearing to consider a proposed <coughs> amendment to approximately 12.17 acres in the plan unit development. PUD district located along the west side of Fortress Boulevard in the Victory Station PUD. 2015-408, uh, Murfreesboro IL-AL Investors LLC applicant. Notice of said public hearing was published in the April 27, 2015 <coughs> issue of a local newspaper. Shabalmi. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Our third public hearing tonight is an amendment to the Victory Station plan development which was, which was originally proved, approved around 2000, 2001, and has been amended several times since then as the plan has evolved. Uh, Victory Station PUD is a mixed-use plan development, uh, some of which has already been developed. Um, some of the uses in the Victory Station plan development that have already been developed are the uh, CVS and the Exxon on the run in the corner of uh, Franklin Road and Fortress Boulevard, as well as the uh, Murfreesboro Missionary Baptist Church on Fortress Boulevard, the Cross Creek Apartments, and the Victory Point Single Family Residential uh, Subdivision. Uh, this particular amendment deals with Parcel F, which is the parcel uh, in the purple on the map in front of us. It is directly to the south of the Victory Point Subdivision along the west side of Fortress Boulevard. Uh, it's composed of 12.17 acres, and currently the, uh, the zoning plan for Victory Station calls for this development to be developed as a 176-unit uh, multifamily residential development with 384 parking spaces. Uh, the applicants are seeking an amendment to the plan development, which would change the proposed use allowed for this you know, parcel F to a what we would classify as a home for the aged and assisted care living facility. It would consist of 176 dwelling units, but as opposed to being traditional uh, multifamily dwelling units, it would include 102 independent living units, 48 assisted living units, and 26 memory care units. 
uh, so it would uh, uh, span the, uh, the spectrum of, of, of care for the aged uh, from independent living to memory care. Uh, in addition, uh, the number of parking spaces provided uh, would decrease from 384 to 165, and one of the major changes would be the increase of open space on this plan as the buildings are uh, pulled further away from the adjoining property lines, uh, including the uh, subdivisions to the uh, north and west, and uh, greater open space is provided as well. Uh, with that being said, the uh, Planning Commission did uh, conduct a public hearing on this matter on April the 1st and uh, unanimously recommended approval of the, uh, of the uh, amendment to the plan development. Uh, Mr. Scotty Burnick with Reagan Smith and Associates is present and he would like to make a short presentation uh, for the City Council regarding the plan, some of the specifics, uh, including the, uh, the layout and the architecture. And I'll be happy to answer any questions as well. Good afternoon. My name is Scotty Burnick. I'm a landscape architect with Reagan Smith and we'll try and keep this brief. Um, as Matthew said, we're proposing to amend the PUD. Uh, as you know, the previous PUD had 176 units. We're keeping the same units. Uh, however, we're proposing one structure. Um, I'd like to show you an exhibit. As you see on the screen, on the top right was the current approved PUD, uh, which is very hard to see up there, with 16 buildings scattered throughout the site. Um, with the proposed PUD that we're uh, showing here on the screen, we're increasing the uh, building setback significantly from the property to the north, which is a part of the PUD, and also to the property to the west. Um, as he noted, uh, we're increasing the green space, we're reducing parking, we're reducing the trip generation, and uh, I think we're reducing the uh, multifamily development in this area. Um, in terms of uh, architecture, there's going to be the first level will be brick, uh, with parts of the second level being brick. The uh, remaining second and third level will be a cement board siding. Uh, this provides a great transition from the single family uh, homes to the north uh, to the commercial that will be developed to the south. Uh, I'm available for questions at the appropriate time. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing and consider this uh, PUD amendment. Good evening, Mayor McFarland, Council, Staff, Joe Swanson, Jr., 1188 Park Avenue. I represent the family that uh, nearly 15 years ago now developed the uh, Victory Station PUD. Um, when Joseph was still here, he and I had, had several conversations about this, and although this is a multifamily product, as you know, as you sit through these meetings, you understand that to really pin down what you exactly want to do sometimes is, can be extremely difficult. Um, we viewed this plan as a multifamily, but it didn't quite meet what the, what the overall plan was. It was more specific than that, and for that reason, Joseph felt like we needed to come before you and get approval since it wasn't exactly traditional multifamily. Um, it's been very good working with Reagan and Smith and the company and Mr. Paul Saxon specifically in this product. I think that uh, through the plan you can see that they've done their homework and they, uh, we agree and would ask and recommend that you approve this project. Thank you. I'm going to come up and introduce myself. I'm Paul Sachs with Smith Packet. I am the developer and we are the parent company for Murfreesboro ILAL Investors. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about who we are, we are one of the largest senior housing developers in the U.S., but don't think large in terms of big publicly traded company with hundreds and hundreds of employees. We're a small company. We are family owned. We are family run. We have been in business almost 35 years, and we're very selective about what markets we go into and then specifically where we locate within the market. And we're excited to be coming to the city. Uh, unlike a lot of developers who come in, build their product, and then go by, we're out of here, we're leaving. We're here for the long run. 
Uh, we have a sister company called Harmony Senior Services. Smith Packett or Murfreesboro ILAL investors will own the building. Harmony, our sister company, will come in and run the building. So we're making a very large investment, probably about $30 million, and uh, we're going to be here for a long time. So again, we're excited to be coming to the city, and uh, uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have about us or about what we're building. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one else, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider for passage on first reading ordinance 15 OZ 31 to amend the conditions applicable to the plan unit development PUD district located along the west side of Fortress Boulevard in the Victory Station PUD. Move for approval. I knew Doug was going to approve that. He's looking for a place to live. <laughs> <laughs> They're dating enough on me over there. <laughs> How fast do you think you can get this thing built? <laughs> it, it was the memory care that got me. <laughs> you had that memory care. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Ms. Gals Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you for the investment in our community, and, and we look forward to you being a, a good partner. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now consider for, uh, recommendations of the Planning Commission. Mr. Blomley. <laughs> the Planning Commission, during its regular meeting on May 6th, Get my PDF ready. During its regular meeting on May 6th, conducting public hearings on the matters that I will go over here, um, a rezoning application uh, for approximately 1.4 acres located at 1508 East Main Street to be rezoned from RM16 to CF, and approximately 0 0.47 acres located at 1512 East Main Street to be re rezoned from RS15 to CF. Uh, Mr. Donnie Dement is the applicant on that request. And another request uh, of rezoning for approximately 0.64 acres located at 417, 419, and 427 East Burton Street to be rezoned from CMRS 8 to OGR. And Marion Catrice Dunstan, Rodney W. Graves, and Teresa Ann Carlton are the applicants. Uh, it is recommended uh, that the City Council schedule public hearings on both of these matters that were recommended uh, unanimously for approval by the Planning Commission. Mr. Rouse, what date would you like? Uh, Mayor, we would recommend June 18th. There was already one public hearing set that night. And I believe that with the amount of discussion at the, at the Planning Commission, these will be fine. Okay. There uh, won't be any problem to schedule these at the same night. What page do you want? I move we schedule the meeting for second. June 18th. All right. Are you the second? All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. And our second item under Planning Commission recommendation is a street renaming request uh, for the bar for Barwood Drive in the Blackman Farm subdivision. And you've got the, the map in front of you. Uh, Barwood Drive is a short street that stubs out into what is being developed as the Hillwood subdivision. Uh, originally, when the Hillwood P PUD was approved in 2008, uh, Barwood Drive was going to curve to the south, and Miranda Drive, which is located in a county subdivision uh, to the east off of Gresham Lane, was then going to tee into uh, Barwood Drive. So both streets would be able to retain their own uh, street name. In 2010, a, an amendment to the Hillwood plan development was approved, which made for one continuous street, uh, in other words, uh, Barwood Drive and Miranda Drive would now be one continuous street from Gresham Lane uh, all the way to Axelwood Drive in the Blackman Farm subdivision. And on the, uh, the map that I have on the TV, you can see I've put, uh, overlaid the uh, master plan for the Hillwood subdivision. Um, with the uh, existing parcels for Blackman Farm to the east and I believe the Glendale subdivision in the county to the west, or excuse me, vice versa, Glendale to the east and Blackman Farm to the west. And as you can see, it is uh, one straight shot from
Gresham Lane all the way to Axelwood Drive. Uh, with this plan development amendment and with the uh, realignment of uh, the connection from Barwood to Miranda, uh, it has necessitated us uh, reviewing the street naming situation um, and reviewing uh, the possibility of a street renaming. Uh, staff took to the Planning Commission for public hearing uh, last Wednesday, May 6th, the renaming of Barwood Drive in the Blackman Farm subdivision. Uh, there are 19 addresses on Barwood Drive, uh, and if the street Barwood Drive is renamed to Miranda Drive, those 19 addresses would be affected and would have to be changed. After, uh, and this recommendation to the uh, Planning Commission was not taken uh, lightly. We did um, poll the police department, the fire department, and 911, and correspondence from the police department, the fire department, and 911 has been included in your agenda packets. And they all recommended uh, that it have one continuous street name uh, and that the street name not change. Uh, so the Planning Commission held a public hearing on this matter and uh, by a vote of six to one approved the uh, staff's recommendation to, uh, to change the street name of Barwood Drive to Miranda Drive. And we know that it's quite an inconvenience for the folks who are, if this is approved, that are going to have their address changed. So we will work very hard to ensure that there is as little inconvenience as possible for the folks who would have their addresses changed. Uh, the Planning Commission has final authority on uh, street naming issues, but historically we have taken these, these matters to the City Council for ratification of the Planning Commission's action. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding this, uh, this request. So does this fall under the category with the Planning Commission, commission that misery loves company? Is why you're bringing uh, it to the <laughs> City Council? That, that could be true. Okay. Mayor um, and Council, uh, Mr. Blomley is our resident expert on street naming changes. He's done several in the past. And uh, as he pointed out, it, sometimes it's not pleasant, but looking at the big picture in, in the county and the city coming together, it really is necessary for health and safety issues on this. Uh, you got a date? Do we need to set a public hearing on this? Uh, no. No, this is just for uh, information. We asked council to uh, uh, ratify, ratify the. Okay. So a resolution or just a motion would be I'll, sufficient. I'll make that motion to approve the recommendations planning uh, <laughs> director. Uh, Do we have a motion? Second. We have a second. Do we have any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'm sorry. I'll discuss a little bit. Uh, you know, Eddie voted against this on Planning Commission, and the reason being is because uh, there are more houses on Barwood, which is in the city, than there are on Miranda, which is in the county. And we're talking about changing more houses in the city, the name of the street. Have, have we had any discussions with the, the neighbors yet? You said you're going to work hard to, to help them out. There's there's been some. Oh, they were all here with. They were all here at the planning commission meeting. We unhappy? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be too, uh, Mr. Lance. But if you look at, we're dealing with the county, who basically washed their hands of it. Said that's your problem. That's not our problem. You've got a situation where you've got two streets. With different names, for the emergency responders, both fire police and EMS, could very well have a real problem if we let this stay what it is. So it's a situation where the PUD was changed, the developer changed his plan with an approval, and uh, it put us all behind the eight ball. And on the initial plan, I guess to Doug's point, is, is they weren't going to stub together. That, I, I yeah, one was going one way and one was going the other. Right. So, so they wouldn't have connected. And, and, and when the PUD got re revised uh, quite some time ago, I guess it was, um, they, they connected these roads. You know, you, you just wish that there had been some scenario where you could have not ran them directly to each other or, you know, and of course my suggestion was to put a roundabout in between them so that there was no confusion as to 
one, one street name. was that there was a change in street name, but uh, I guess because the PUD had been approved, they felt like the developer who owned the property may not want to put a roundabout on in there because it's going to take up some of his lot space, and uh, and I get that, but um, I, I just I didn't think it was completely fair to the people who lived on Barwood Drive, and mm -hmm. therefore I, I was the one day vote. Can, um, do we, does Miranda to the east, uh, you know, it looks like there's one section of property here that might be county. Does it continue on to the, to, is that city, is that a city tract on to the east of this, the one that adjoins? Where the, uh, you see, uh, I don't know what map. Yeah. You see the, the, the blue or whatever color that is where it's barwood and then it mm -hmm. goes into Miranda heading, which I guess would be east, I don't know, but looks like it's heading east. And then you go through that track, mm -hmm. cross over that yellow line, and it looks like there's more Miranda onto the east. Yeah, I think that's kind of deceptive. Gresham Lane is actually just right off the map. So, uh, and you, in fact, you can kind of see on the very right-hand side of the map the, the, G, the top of the G and the R on on the very bottom right hand corner so Miranda Drive right now is a is uh, basically runs from Gresham Lane on the right side of the map to the Hillwood on the right the, side of the map where Miranda Drive is is that city no that's that's county that was the area that was okay. that was annexed back in 2006 I believe that uh, is tied up in, in litigation, Mr. Rogers. The annexation was, uh, ordinance was passed. It was tied up by litigation and with the changes that have happened in uh, the legislation, uh, future annexation of that area is, I would have to say at this point, doubtful. Okay. So the, the, the middle section of that is just a proposed development then. Is that what, why it looks different? Uh, it, <laughs> to, to some degree it's proposed, but it is, it is underway. Uh, uh, the Hillwood subdivision is, uh, I'd say it's probably one of the uh, most rapidly growing subdivisions uh, out there today. Uh, and we are seeing a new section for Hillwood every few months. And that is the reason why uh, what precipitated us bringing this uh, to the Planning Commission and the City Council, because the connection, it appears, now is imminent. If you see the area, it's kind of L-shaped. It's a little bit darker than... Um, than the rest of, of the Hillwood subdivision. Uh, it ties into the purple portion of Barwood Drive. That, that L-shaped portion was approved as a preliminary plat um, by the Planning Commission last month or the month before. So the developer of the Hillwood subdivision is moving forward rapidly with his plans, and one of the next sections that he intends on constructing is the extension of, of Barwood or Miranda on his development, so that kind of precipitated it, knowing that that with this extent, with this extension being made in the uh, relative immediate future, it needed to have a name. And if we had him name it Bar, or excuse me, Miranda, uh, it's confusing. If we had him name it uh, 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 Miranda, and uh, we decided to change it to Barwood, then we're looking at changing those new houses that are just being going to be built. In the new section as well in the future so ironing this out now uh, allows us to give the developer of Hillwood uh, some direction as he uh, builds his new sections and names his streets this is a you know looking at this you've got a development that's in between two existing roads the Miranda Road drive was there first but that's the barwood drive that's there and that's in the blackman oaks correct blackman farm blackman farms i'm sorry i can understand why those people are upset uh, and the people that are there on braxton bragg and miranda and 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 they're, they're not coming into the city that they have stuck a stake in the ground and said, we live in the county and we don't want to be part of your annexation. There's, there's no question that, you know, if I think the developer could solve the problem in his development by just making sure that those roads don't butt into each other. 
uh, where, wherever the contact point would be. Um, but, I, and I know he's got an approved plan, but it's not that that plan couldn't be adjusted, so. Is that in the city? Is that in the city now? Is that what that line is? Is that development in the city? The, the Hillwood subdivision? Yeah, this, yes. the middle portion. Yes, is city, yes. Right? The, the developer, um, that property is, is zoned. The land use entitlement rights are there. Um, a part of those land use entitlement rights are the layout of the subdivision. Uh, and he is, he is moving forward with his development. So the way I looked at it, Rick, was the fact that somebody's got to make sure that there's not an issue with the health and safety of the, of the people in that subdivision for fire protection and police protection and other emergency access. And when the county basically said they're, they're not going to do anything, it threw the ball back in our lap. So if the developer called it Barwood all the way through over here, there would only be one, two, three, four, five, six, 13 houses, 13 houses that would end up on Miranda Drive, right? Out there with, that, that faces Gresham Lane? I believe there's more than that. Six, seven, yeah. I believe thir no, 13 be a couple, is a couple nine, more. There might be 15. Right. There'd be 13 or so. 15. There's at least 16. Maybe. At least 15. And there's another lot, so there's... Oh, it cuts off. Well, Mine cuts off. Yeah, right. Yours yeah. cut, this picture cuts off before it, it yeah. gets all the way to Gresham. I, I believe the 13 number is correct, because I think some of those corner lots are actually addressed off of the adjacent side street. That's all correct. Right. And, and so we did... Uh, I made a call to um, uh, Mr. DeMossi at the county planning office um, to gauge his thoughts on, on what to do, because the changing of Miranda Drive was an option, but I think that... Uh, the consensus that we both reached was that the um, uh, this was precipitated by uh, a development that is occurring in the city um, and rather than take it to the county road board which is the board that would be responsible for uh, renaming Miranda Drive uh, uh, we would bring it to the Planning Commission for review and approval if I may add that uh, this master plan was approved back in 2010. Uh, it was actually a redevelopment, as you're aware of. And in 2010, when that was redeveloped, the, the then the planning director, as well as the traffic director and the city engineer had looked at this master plan, approved it. I can assure you that we do not take a street name change lightly. Uh, we go to great lengths to try to prevent that from happening. We do. Anybody that's ever moved knows the aggravation of trying to go in and change your address. And, and that was considered, believe it or not, back when this was done. Knew at some point in time that that street would have to be changed. Some of the factors, though, that do come into count or into play when that happens, you have to think about the, not only the lot layout, but this piece of property does lay in between an existing county subdivision, city development coming up to it for good connectivity through the streets, through the subdivision, uh, working with the uh, topography of the property, the drainage that you have to work with, and from the time it was previously approved to the 2010, our stormwater regs had changed, water quality uh, requirements were increased, uh, so there was a a lot of thought went into this plan. I'm not trying to justify it. What I am saying, though, that it was not made lightly. Uh, it is a good plan. From time to time, we will have to come up to the council and the planning commission and ask for renaming. We try to prevent it, if at all possible. Uh, but from time to time, we will, because a good developed subdivision road layout, uh, even though we are in convenience in 19 people, we will have to live with the development for a long time. Uh, having good connect connectivity or connectivity through this subdivision uh, is very, very important. And uh, could you redesign it? Absolutely, it could be redesigned, there's no doubt. But uh, in working with the engineers and the developer, 
this was the plan they decided on back in 2010. I was not there, of, of course, but I can assure you I do know who had uh, approval on this. And that the proof that we don't take it lightly, changing addresses, is the number of uh, name changes that we come and bring the council and the planning commission. And we may average one a year. Uh, so, and there's a lot of development. And uh, in the big scheme of things, uh, like I said, we have to live with the decisions we make, and we try to make the best decisions for the future when we do these developments. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Thank you. There's just not a good solution here. I mean, there's really, really not. It looks to me like there's a lot of connectivity to the north, out to Braxton Bragg. You know, there's two roads that look like they're stubbing out to Braxton Bragg to get over to Gresham. So, I mean, having another road, I don't know, maybe. I don't see that the connecting of the two roads really benefits anybody. Like you say, if you the main traffic flow is probably going to be Braxton Bragg if the road's never connected right there in, in the center of the big open field that sits there now, I mean, you're going to wind up with plenty of access back out uh, into the either the county or the city, depending on which direction you want to drive. Matthew, why would we have not changed or had this done in 2010 when this, this middle section was approved? Why, why don't we just take care of it then instead of wait till now? Well, I think it's preferable to do it when new development comes because um, when a zoning plan is approved, that development doesn't always come to fruition. And if someone wanted to go in and amend the, the PUD once more, then we, we could be looking at multiple street name changes. Yeah. So what we'd rather do is wait till development is imminent, till we know that we need to do it, and then move forward at that time. Is there any kind of a indication, insinuation, guarantee of any sort that this name would be changed to this when this was approved uh I, I was not really involved at that time so i can't tell you what the thought process was at that time generally speaking when we do something like this and would, would we say we're going to I mean, you can't say, I mean, we, it's got to be voted on, right? So, I mean, there's really no way we could say this is going to happen, correct? Well, I think that, that when that plan was approved, it was, um, you know, this was an unintended consequence of, of that plan being approved. And it was, uh, uh, but I, I think I first noticed it a couple of years ago, and I started preparing myself for the um, inevitability that this issue was going to come up. And um, so as Hillwood has begun to move forward, um, it's, it's sped up my thought process. And, uh, but one thing, if, if this is approved, um, I want to assure the city council, um, I've done this many times before. Um, not a lot of times, like Gary says, we try to minimize it as much as possible. But we have had large scale renamings, much larger scale than this. Uh, Barfield Crescent, um, Kimbrough Road, um, Blackman Road, Middle Tennessee Boulevard, Manson Pike, um, and uh, those are all, uh, the, the transition is difficult at first, but we do, as, as someone who has done this for the last nine years, I do take great pride in how I work with the neighbors, how I work with uh, the utilities, the service providers, um, and I hope that anybody who would, uh, who has been affected by those changes, you know, would would tell you that when they call me and they have a problem with one of their utilities, I will get on the phone or I'll send an email immediately to one of those service providers and say, hey, what do you need to to make sure that this person uh, gets their problem taken care of? And so it's it's something that I take pride in in making sure that that we do it the right way and help those citizens. The last question I have, Mr. Bomley, because of the vested right with the plat the developer does not have to i guess my question is does the, does the developer have to change their plat i think the developer has the the land use entitlement uh 
I think that anything that he would do to change the street layout or to change the lot configuration would be voluntary on his part. Uh, and Mr. Ives can, Mr. Ives agrees with that. Have we had any conversation with him? Uh, has, has that conversation occurred? Oh, yes. Uh, no, no. I mean, I think, I think he is aware of the fact that that this discussion was imminent about the about um, a potential street name change. I think he was basically, or his engineer, who I've been in discussions with, was waiting on the city to determine um, which street name to tell him to use. So I think they're ready to move forward with their plan as they as they've got it currently designed. I, I would like to. Say suggest that the motion, if, if it's going to be approved, that it be revised to say that the motion is to ratify the action of the Planning Commission not to approve their recommendation, because this doesn't truly come as a recommendation, but we are asking Council to ratify it. And that's a necessity or not a necessity? I mean, it's, this is, this is a lot of discussion. The, is my the Charter and State Law gives Planning Commission uh, say so over street names uh, for as long as I've been here I think whenever there's a change it's been brought to, to council uh, and so this one is is also is there a motion if if mr. Motion? Young, if mr. young would uh, accept my <laughs> rewording of his motion then there is a motion I, I will accept the change recommended change from mr. Ives to my motion Okay, you have a motion, a second. Any more discussion? <laughs> I would consider deferring. You want to meet with the residents? No. <laughs> I want. Uh, I mean, we got a room full of people here for the planning commission meeting. I'm surprised none of them came back. I guess they just felt like. Well, I think they knew that it was not going to be a public hearing. Right. Uh, right tonight. Right. But when uh, they had the opportunity to speak out, but they were they were vehemently opposed to it. I felt. I think okay. there may, I don't know exactly the but I developers. Think I, but I think the feeling of acceptance and it was going to happen, I don't think they felt like that anything they said was going to change what was going to imminently happen. I'll put it that way. You sure you don't want to meet with them? If we don't ratify it, does it change anything? If the state charter says it's That'll a done a deal, why are we? That'll we be did. a good question. And I can't <laughs> fully answer that right now. So why are right. we? Been all this time Let's, talking about for Maybe information and for information for the from the planning commission to the council to always let them know what the planning commission is doing and courtesy to the council to do that and so we don't really need to make a motion and vote, vote but I right. appreciate the information I do I'm glad to know about it I didn't know about it so I'm glad to know about it but if there's well, we don't need to vote on it because it's a done deal if we don't even know what's going to happen when we vote I, I'd say we just hold off maybe we ought to defer it. Perhaps, and and if if the action is final, maybe the action is final. I'm totally confused. I, I, <laughs> well, Mr. Skills Harris, I think. Um, Help me, Mayor. We, as a rule, have like for instance, we don't have to have public okay. hearings at the city council level if a public hearing is done at the planning commission level. But we have said that we're going to go the extra step and that the city council is always going to make those decisions for public hearings. So, I, all right, I, we'll I, vote. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> I, I'm my opinion. I, I think we vote on it, and yeah. that's so. Yeah. So if, we have a motion in a second. All right, I'm gonna back the planning commission. Planning commission's vote on this uh, because that's all we're really doing. Uh, but. Um, because it wouldn't you know, change anything. I wish there were options, not. and maybe we should have had a public hearing if that's what we're going to do. Rick, in, in doing the research, we looked at the options. The options were to see if the county would participate, and the answer was no. Right. Then, the by right of the plan, the developer doesn't have to do anything. And if he does anything, it's going to cost him two to four lots if he culled the sacks that in. And that may be... If the lots are forty thousand dollars a piece, that's over a hundred thousand dollars. So he's exercising his right not to do anything. 
Is that well, he would be one. He would be the one selling houses with, or she would be the one selling houses with a mixed up street address if he if he or she did that though right i mean yeah, that's, it's that's, not our that's, responsibility that's not accurate mr lalance uh, it will be the people now living on barwood who will be at risk more at risk because the the rest of the street is not going to be named barwood now i don't think it'll continue to be named miranda we will have a change in the middle of a an area that we have very very few if any other places before and when we've had them we've fixed them because our public safety people strongly encourage us not to do that. It, it, one way or the other, you, you just drastically increase the likelihood that a policeman, a fireman, an ambulance is not going to get to the place they're supposed to get to. And that is one of our primary responsibilities as a city. And I would urge you to listen closely to the recommendations of your public safety officials who asked that this, that this change be made. Sounds yes, to me, it's an inconvenience. Sounds yeah. to me like in I'm 2010 sorry. they shouldn't have approved the plat. I mean, it's, if, if we're going to if we're going to get into this every time, maybe we maybe our planning department needs to take that into account. I mean, if it's that dangerous, which I agree, I, I, I clearly think it should be. But, you know, to impose to for for a forty thousand dollars for a developer or for whatever reason that you can come up with, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, maybe we ought to take it into account a different way. That's all I'm saying. I, like I said, I'll, I'll. Mr. Ives, if this development that's being developed is in city. It is. And the part of the neighborhood that is connected to the city is named Barwood. Why would you make the assumption that he would name it Miranda and create the confusion? If he named it Barwood, then you've got a clear cut line between the city and the county. The only question is, where does the confusion, where is the confusion? It's not well, whether well, there's confusion, there it's just where it is. You said I was wrong. You but, wouldn't be any, if, but, it, if, if you're in the city, you're going to get city services sent out to you on Barwood. If you're in the county, you're going to get, I mean, you're almost helping to draw the line there between the city and the county. The line's not drawn if you just say that's Miranda running from the county all the way back into the city. This question still is where where is the line then and whether the line is at existing county line or at at the uh, uh, why would you draw the line? development line? Yeah. There is a line because at some point you're going if you're going to change the street names in the middle of 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 what would to a normal person simply be one large residential development and it, all of a sudden there's a street name change. We have the cap we have the capability to say, okay, look, if somebody calls from and I'm making up numbers here from 1494 Miranda versus from County. 1236 Miranda, and they call 911, there there's going to be some change. You know, somebody's going to have to know whether or not they're going to send city or county. Correct. Yes. Well, All right. So if they call and say we're going to go to 1496 Barwood instead of 1296 Miranda. You, what you're saying is we don't know that difference, or I mean, I look. I, I know I mean, the that I know that be, the do public. Do you have street lights? If you don't have street lights, you're in the county. If you have street lights, you're probably in the city. I, I mean, I, 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 when it's at night, whether it's daylight or dark, <laughs> and the, I think that, the I think sirens are running and people are going places, don't give them more of an opportunity to have a problem. Yeah. If it's, it's all Miranda. Yeah, I, I think the issue would be, and this is where we. I think we would have to look at it. if we kept that all Miranda in that one section Barnwood or Barwood. <laughs> and I'm suggesting the part that's being developed in the city be developed as Barwood. Right. But the only problem would be, and this is where I, I do, I don't like to have to change the street for those 19. I, and, and I'm just giving you my opinion. I don't like that. But I also wouldn't like that if we have someone coming down, um, Gresham to Miranda that it will not pull up on EMS that they can cut through Miranda and that turns into Barwood. They just have to physically know that, that, hey, Miranda turns into Barwood. Well, I know that Thompson Lane turns into Compton Road. I know that Memorial Boulevard turns into Old Fort Parkway. Yeah. I know that Medical Center Parkway turns into Loki. I mean, it's not uncommon for us to have streets that intersect that don't have the same name. But this would be a clear-cut line between the city and the county to say 
here's the county city city limits. But Mr. Smotherman, the commonality of those name changes, at least almost all of them, is that they change at our what we call our zero streets. So let's do this, Mr. Ives. Doug We've right. got a motion in a second, and I think everybody has given their opinions. So let's call for question. Ms. Wright, go call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? No. Mr. Washington? Aye. Vice Mayor Young? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right, we'll now move into Board and Commission appointments, and we have, uh, <coughs> I'm going to ask if y'all don't mind if we could add one to the list only because um, we're asking for Hope Fair to replace Chris Schaffner as the City of Murfreesboro representative on the City Art Committee. And I can't think of a person who would be better to serve on that committee since she looks at it all day long. <laughs> so um, there's probably not a person within the city who watches out for the art more than Ms. Fair. So instead of having to have this come back another week, I'd like to add her for uh, recommendation. Roger Heinrich to replace Dennis O'Neill as the MTSU representative. And then also uh, David Hoover to fill a three-year term uh, as a vacancy from, from the secretary, Miss Betty uh, Brewer, for the Evergreen Cemetery Board. I move we accept the mayor's appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shaw. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Uh, rear permits. None tonight. Okay. Uh, payment of statements. Mr. Smotherman, any questions? <laughs> no, no questions, call for question. <laughs> I move we pay the bills. Have a motion. Second. I have a second. Ms. Wright, we'll call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Smotherman. Um, other business from Stafford City Council, you have one item that's on your Mayor and Council, very quickly, a uh, street department's requesting the purchase of one John Deere 5065E cab utility tractor <laughs> off of the state contract. Uh, the price is $32,726.48. Funds are available. I move what kind of delivery the time we got on that? Prior to June 30th. It is actually sitting on a lot. I move we buy the mower. Second. Motion oh, second. Ms. Wright, we call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Any other business? I've got one item. Uh, Mayor, uh, we are proudly handing you the uh, annual budget for this year. City managers are required to uh, submit the uh, proposed budget to City Council by uh, May the 15th. I'm putting that in your hands this evening. You've got binders also. Uh, for water and sewer and uh, city schools. Uh, and I'd also like to set the dates for the budget review. Uh, Ms. Tig from my office has uh, contacted you and it appears that the dates of Tuesday, May 26th, Thursday, May 28th, and Wednesday, June 3rd are available for all members of council. Uh, so we would request a motion uh, to uh, set those as the budget review sessions. In the past, we've started those at 4 p.m. That certainly is also your, at your discretion. Uh, and I would propose that the outside agencies would be reviewed on Tuesday, uh, May the 26th. Uh, we'd finish up the other departments on Thursday, May 28th. And if we needed a, a third review session, we could do that on June the 3rd. And the council budget public hearing will be on uh, Thursday, June the 4th. So we're doing the 26th, the 28th, and the 3rd. And the 3rd. Okay. And all at 4 o'clock. Is that okay with the council members? That's that's our suggestion, but uh, certainly can change if you need it to. That's good. So we need a motion to get those going? Yes, sir. Has everybody looked at their calendars based on the emails? I'll make a motion that we have those meetings. Second. Okay. Have Second. A motion. Second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Vice Mayor Young. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. I'm going to have to separate you two down there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seeing no other business, we'll stand adjourned.